Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good, and we love talking about agriculture. We're honored to be joined by Chris Fleming. He is the Tennessee State Coordinator for Agriculture in the Classroom. How are you doing? I'm doing good on a uh, dreary day. <laughs> Well, hey, we have a lot of good to talk about, so that'll brighten the spirits for sure. So let's go ahead and dive in. When you talk about agriculture in the classroom as a program, as an effort, give us a little backstory. started last century, uh, back in the early 80s. Uh, people started noticing that uh, students didn't have the same background knowledge when they came to school. Um, just little small things of uh not recognizing where their food came from. And I think part of that is through our uh, our use of fast food and, uh, you know, just being able to grab something real quickly and maybe not recognize that it's uh, that it came from a farm. Uh, and so the uh, uh, farmers and uh, producers, I think, recognized that first. And then teachers later started recognizing that, that we were losing that connection. Uh, and so Secretary of Agriculture John Block uh, put together a task force to see if it was going on nationwide. And if so, what were states doing uh, to combat that? Um, and the, the reason it's a, an issue that needs addressing, if students and the public in general don't know where their food comes from, uh, then they're liable to uh, make decisions based on emotions instead of science that could negatively affect their health and their source of food. When you look at the programs and ag literacy and increasing awareness, there's a lot that goes into this for students, for teachers, you have grants, you have a lot, online resources too. So go ahead and start unpacking the different ways that you connect in with the community. Appreciate the uh, the invite to uh, introduce people to it if they don't know about agricultural literacy. Uh, and to uh, maybe further some knowledge for those people that are aware of it. Uh, as I said, it started back in the early 80s. Uh, we celebrated our 30th year of our foundation two or three years ago here in Tennessee. Uh, the foundation was started to provide funding so that schools didn't have to foot the bill for uh, including some additional things into their classroom. Um, so I, I'll go through the big five that we do. Uh, our our teacher training and material development. Um, uh, agri agriculture in the classroom is considered a supplemental material uh, in that it's not a curriculum, it's not a textbook uh, that the school uses. Uh, it's just lessons that uh, assist the teacher in teaching something they already have to teach, uh, just maybe a different way of doing it. Uh, my favorite example, I guess, is if you're teaching a uh, numeracy or the ability to count, you know, why not put uh, cows and pigs and chickens in those examples uh, instead of just, uh, you know, any other pieces of uh, things that you could count. Uh, so developing materials and then training teachers and how to uh, use those uh, is a lot of our time. A lot of that's done during the summer. Uh, we host 11 workshops across the state, so uh, teachers don't have to travel very far to come and uh, see those. So once we have a teacher in the uh, workshop and we show them what we're trying to do, we're not trying to create more farmers. We're not trying to uh, um, show them what they need to teach, just a, a, a different way to teach some of the things they already have to teach. Uh, then we give them some resources that they can use. You mentioned one of them is our school garden grant, uh, which may be a misnomer. Uh, it started out as uh, outdoor classroom gardens. Um, we found that uh, students learning about growing food or plants or animals, uh, there's something about the hands-on portion that allows them to really get their hands dirty. Uh, in a figurative way and a literal way uh, that when they do that, they make a longer lasting connection with the information and they retain the knowledge longer. Uh, and so through the foundation, we make available $500 grants to schools to establish a garden and or 
any sort of food production uh, at their school. That can be a tower garden, a container garden, a traditional garden, raised beds. Uh, we've had schools do a little hen houses. Uh, we've had some raise steers, uh, raise uh, goats, uh, anything that shows them where their food comes from. So that is a, a, a hands-on activity that we can fund at the school to enhance what the teacher is doing in the classroom. Uh, a third thing that we do uh, is through farm tours. Out of our 95 counties, we have about 72 counties that pre-pandemic participated in some sort of um, on-the-farm visit, or maybe that was the farm coming to the school. Uh, and so we have uh, uh, those ways of doing the activities. And so we we give the county uh, $1,000 to offset any expenses that they would have in conducting a on-farm or a farm tour visit, as we call it. Our fourth uh, thing that we do to uh, promote ag literacy is to recognize teachers for the efforts that they are putting in. Uh, and this, uh, each county has the ab ability to recognize an outstanding teacher. Uh, and then that application or that, that teacher uh, is invited to fill out an application that uh, can get them recognized nationally. Uh, the National Ag in the Classroom program has a, a convention each year or a conference. This year it'll be held in or uh, Orlando, Florida, the last week of June, and we will be taking uh, probably about 15 to 20 teachers with us there to uh, learn what other teachers are doing uh, that have similar uh, desires, similar uh, struggles that they do, and they learn a lot through their networking. So we recognize those teachers at the county level, at state level, and at the national level. And the, uh, our fifth thing that we do to promote ag literacy is through a network. We call it the uh, uh, Farm Friends. Uh, and so that is getting a list of volunteers from each county that's willing to talk with the teacher about uh, anything agricultural. Uh, and so it's a, a volunteer network. Teachers get their cell phone numbers, gets their email address, their addresses. You know, look up somebody that's local and uh, i give you one example. In Nashville, we have probably 15 schools that have incubators, and they are hatching out baby chicks. Uh, so one of the first questions the teachers usually uh, ask us is, where do I get the uh, fertilized eggs? Because uh, if you go to Kroger's or Aldi's or uh, anywhere and pick up some eggs, they're not going to hatch. Uh, if they did, something went really wrong in that process. Um, so some of those farm friends may be connecting them to some of the commodities they're teaching about, maybe a, a, a classroom, adopt a classroom situation. Uh, we have uh, uh, other groups have also uh, enhanced what we do. Uh, three weeks ago, we celebrated Ag Literacy Week. Uh, the governor recognized that as the third week of November. And we invite volunteers to go into classrooms and read a, a book about agriculture that's accurate uh, to the students and then do some hands-on activities with them uh, and interact with them. So through those methods, uh, we're trying to spread the word about agricultural literacy and make sure kids know where their food comes from. What are some of the things that you track, either stats or maybe they're not stats, but they're more stories, so quantitative, qualitative data, but what are the things that you track on your end to show progress and opportunities for growth? I guess the opportunities of growth uh, stick out more to us uh, when we hear some of the uh, students and teachers uh, coming through some of the farm tours. Um, I think one that, that sticks out in my mind, this one actually happened in Davidson County. Uh, the uh, uh, Davidson County Farm Bureau and the uh, uh, Agricultural Museum at one time invited schools to come there for their rural life festival. And uh, the uh, pandemic kind of put a, put a halt on that for a little while. 
Uh, but one of the stops that they would have, the students would go around and see what happens on the farm. And so students were seeing a sheep being sheared. So the wool cut off of a, uh, a sheep. And as they were going to their next station, they heard the teacher say, boys and girls, now we've seen where cotton comes from. That's where your clothes are made from. And so the uh, person shearing the sheep had to stop and back them up and say, well, let's, uh, let's regroup here just a minute. This is a fiber. It is white. It is made into clothing, but this is wool. This is not cotton. Um, so we know we have uh, some ways to go when even teachers have those some of those misconceptions. Uh, we are making some progress, I think. We, uh, we offer a couple of contests and scholarships for students. Uh, we have to sponsor the Governor's School for Agriculture, which is held at UT Martin each summer. And so they take about 30 uh, high school students, uh, some of those who have an interest in agriculture and some of them who are um, interested but maybe unaware or unavailable to uh, take an agricultural class in high school. Uh, and they write an essay, uh, what they see uh, good about agriculture, bad about agriculture, any issues that are out there. And then a, a committee goes through those uh, hundreds of applications to pick out those 30 students. Uh, but we're seeing that, that students do want to know where their food comes from. They do want to uh, learn more about agriculture. And when they find out that one out of every five or six jobs in Tennessee is directly related to agriculture, uh, they figure out, hey, this you know could be uh, part of my career going down the road. Especially looking ahead as, as individuals become health conscious and, you know, you want to know where your food comes from. You want to make those choices. And to your point, economic drivers too, with job creation, all sorts of opportunities. But just in general, having a better understanding of where your food comes from, the environment, all the implications, how we all play a vital role in that, uh, you know, sustainability, environmental protection, like all of these things play a very important role in protecting our environment, protecting our future, making good choices, and obviously a bright future ahead for all of us. How can the community help your efforts? So as I mentioned, uh, Ag Literacy Week and the uh, school gardens, uh, we always like volunteers uh, that have a passion for agriculture, whatever their, uh, their role in agriculture is. Agriculture is the one industry that everyone participates in. Uh, not all are producers, most of, but every one of us are consumers of agricultural products. Uh, and so if you, uh, if you have a garden, if you have livestock, uh, and you're willing to go into a school and read, uh, we have a website, tennesseeag.org. And on that website, uh, teachers can go and sign up that they're willing to have someone come in and read to their class. Volunteers can sign up to go there and contact our local school. Uh, my children are grown and out of college now. I have a granddaughter uh, coming up through the ranks. So I'm, I'm kind of in that uh, donut hole of not having anybody directly involved in a classroom right now. Uh, but almost everyone has somebody in their family that's uh, connected to education. And if they uh, look, uh, educators are always looking for volunteers for uh, caring adults that will go in and uh, do some kind of activity with the students. Uh, so that would be one way. Um, uh, our foundation is a nonprofit, so we do accept donations. We raise money through selling of cookbooks, through memorial donations, through honorariums, uh, all of those things at uh, agclassroom.org slash TN. Uh, so that's uh, volunteering their time, volunteering and donating money uh, is is another way. Fortunately, in Tennessee, as I said, our foundation started about 32, 33 years ago. Uh, and so we have a wonderful base uh, built up. So anything that we uh, think of to do that teachers could benefit from, uh, whether it's going to the national conference or starting a tower garden at their school, or visiting a uh, pick your own pumpkin patch. Uh, we have uh, donors who are willing to donate uh, to make sure that happens. Uh, and so those are ways that people can be involved. 
That's awesome. You've mentioned it throughout, but go ahead and mention it again. Where do we go to get involved? So website, where do we go? So our Tennessee Ag in the Classroom website is agclassroom.org slash TN. Uh, if you're interested just in the Ag Literacy uh, Week, uh, that is tennesseeag.org, uh, which will also link back to the others. Uh, Ag in the Classroom is a national program. There are uh, people like me in all 50 states and five territories who are coordinating the work of volunteers. Uh, we appreciate all of the uh, folks that started the foundation back 33 years ago uh, to make us able to uh, promote this uh, and then not be a burden on any one group or individual. Well, Chris Fleming, Tennessee State Coordinator for Agriculture in the Classroom, thank you for all you do and for coming on the show. Thank you very much.